It's time for the interview. It's time for breakthrough. If you're ready for next level blessings, abundance, and prosperity, then it's time to tune in to the interview with your girl, Trish M. Hey, fabulous ladies. Hey, it's your girl, Trish M. And did you know that I own a boutique? Yes, ladies, yes. Check out Trish M. Boutique today and use code podcast to get 25% off the total order. Go to www.trishmfashions.com. That's Trish M. Fashions with an S. Dot com and don't forget use code podcast to get 25% off well, I come to you with a word this morning as we're on this radical faith journey I come to you with the subject the I only have season. <laughs> Anybody, you probably have never said that you're in a season of I only have, but you look at what you have and you say, well, I only have this. Well, I ain't got that. Well, I'm still in need of this. Well, we gotta have that kind of thing. Have you ever found yourself thinking or saying that this have you ever found yourself thinking or saying that? Yes. Like, I only have, I only need, I only got, but I really won't. And so you find yourself in the I only season. And I want to talk to you today about that. I'm going to come to you from Matthew chapter 14. I believe this is the NIV version. And this is a very familiar scripture. It's where Jesus feeds the 5,000. It says, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, this is what he's talking about. Um, uh, Lazarus, I believe, had just died. And that was his friend. Or, no, no, John the Baptist was beheaded. And that was his friend. And so Jesus was sad. And so he wanted to withdraw. He wanted to be alone. So he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place because his friend had died. And hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they, that they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Here, they say, well, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. Amen. Amen. Y'all saw the part where they said, well, we only have. Did you know that there were issues when you start not just thinking about the I only have, but when you start speaking, well, I only have. Wow. God has an issue with the I only. Wow. The, and, the, and there are issues when you begin to speak and think and believe in the I only. God has an issue when you begin to think, see, believe, and just uh, speak in the atmosphere, the only. The first issue that God has, y'all ready for that? Is they immediately thought 
they had to go somewhere else to get the blessing. Wow. Come wow. on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Wow. And, and the issue is, there's an issue. Can we put it up there? They immediately thought that they had to go somewhere else to get the blessing. Wow. That is an issue with God. Wow. Because God is saying, wait, come out. I have blessed you. And then the only thing that you can say is I only have. The blessing was already in the midst. Oh, but all they could see was the I only. Mm. The blessing, I'm telling you, y'all listen to me. Whatever it is that you have lack of, whatever that is, that could be a man, woman, boy, girl, sister, brother, cousin, money, finance, whatever it is. God said it's already in your midst. You can't see it, but I need you to see it. Come on, somebody. You can't see it, but I need you to see it. The blessing is already in your midst. Wait a minute, look at this. In, in, in verse 15, it said, As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. It's already getting late. They said, Send the crowds away so they could go to the village and buy themselves some food. They said, send them away. But the food they needed was in their face. Wow. The blessing that they needed was in their face. They just didn't realize it. The blessing they needed was in their face. Y'all listen to it. Somebody needs to say this. The blessing I need is in my face. It's in my midst. It's in my midst. I can't see it, but I see it. I don't know who this is for. Somebody needs to declare that I can't see it, but I see it. Because it's already in my midst. It's already in my midst. The breakthrough they needed was in their face. They just didn't realize it. Good. They thought it if they left, they could find it somewhere else. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. They thought that if they left, they could find it somewhere else. You thought if you left, you could find it somewhere else. You thought if they left, if they left, if he left, you could find it somewhere else. But he said the blessing is already there. Where is the faith to believe in what you already got? Mm. Wow. Where is the faith to believe in what you already got? This is a Selah moment. Where is the faith to believe in what you already got? You already got the gift. You already got the talent. You already got the anointing. You already got the provision. You already got the next level. Where is the faith to believe in what you already got? That's good. This is a Selah moment because we have to think about it. Where is the faith to believe? They was like, we're just going to send them away. Like, we're just going to send them away. He was like, no, 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 no. Hold, slow your roll. So there was an issue. The, that was the first issue. The second issue, God had to remind them that they already got it. They just had to open their eyes to see it. God is saying, I need to remind you today. But the first issue was you sent them away. The second issue is that you can't see what I see. The second issue, God is saying, I got an issue because you can't see what I see. You frustrated, you depressed, wow. you get oppressed, you feel like you rejected, overlooked, over this and under that. See, God said, I need you to see what I see. You see natural, I see super. Wow. And so God is saying, let me remind you that what you need is already there. You just can't see it yet. So just because you can't see it yet don't mean it ain't going to manifest. So sometimes, even though it's already there, it may not be time for a manifestation. So you got to hold on to what you don't see and not send away what you don't see because somebody has your next level. But instead, you send them away or you leave from them or you say, you know what, I'm going to go find it over yonder. And God is saying, no, 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 I got a problem. One, you sending, you, you sending, you didn't believe in what you have. And two, I got to remind you of what you have. There are some issues. The third issue God has said, it, it, he sees this in the, in the I only have, is that you limit yourself by opening your mouth and producing doubt instead of decree and blessings. Right. That's right. You limit yourself by opening your mouth and decreeing doubt, producing doubt, Instead of decreeing blessings, where is the radical faith? Yeah, I know he a mess. I know she a mess. I know it's a mess. I know there's an issue with it. But can you open up your mouth and speak those things that are not as though they were? Can you begin to share to your own self? Ain't nobody else got to hear you. Can you begin to share to your own self that wealth is around, is all around you? That, that, that next level is all upon you. 
that you're doing things that you've never done before. You're saying things you've never said before. You're encountering things, new levels of blessings that you've never encountered before. Can you open up your mouth and, 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 and negate doubt but produce and decree blessings? So, so God said you're limiting yourself. In this I only have season. You're limiting yourself in this I only got season. You're limiting yourself in looking at what everybody else have and you don't have. You're limiting yourself in, in, in seeing what, what's going on all around you and then and making yourself doubt you. God said you got to have radical faith in this season like never before if you're going to get what I have for you. Wow. So those are some limits that we, we put on God. Then now here... here you, God is saying you you got to have faith. Then look at verse 17. How would they limit in themselves? They said, we only have, we have here only. Only. <laughs> we have here only. <laughs> we have here only. Five loaves of bread and two fish. We have here only. Mm. Like, like. All we got, all you doing, you only do this. They only do that. How many times have we said, well, I only have. I can only do. I can only be because that's all I saw. I can only say. Wow. How many times you have said, I can only. We can only. They can only. When you do that, you limit what God wanted to do with the only. That's good. Wow. What God wanted to do with the only was bring multiplication. But you only saw only. And God saw more. Now the process, we got to talk about the process of the only. The process of the only, there are steps to the process. When you see that you only have, right? You got to know what to do with the only. One thing you can't do is produce doubt. So God is saying now, yeah, we know that real life situations happen and you see what you see, you know what you know, right? So we're not negating the only, but there's a process for the only. You want to know step one? Step one, the only that you have, you got to give it to God. Wow, that's good. The only that's that you good. have, you got to give it to God. Wow. The only that you have, you got to give it to God. The first step to making only into much is to give it to Jesus. The first step, your last five dollars, <laughs> your last piece of husband, your last piece of wife, <laughs> whatever the issue you got with them, them wild kids, the people, the family, the business, you got to bring it. You got to bring it. I'm going to say that again. You got to bring it. That's good. Because God love when you bring the only. That's right. That's God right. love when you bring the only. He said, yeah, I can do a lot with the only. You, you don't limit me because I can do a lot. You got to surrender it so that God can multiply it. Mm. You got to surrender it so that God can multiply it and bring the increase that you need. Somebody need to surrender the only. Somebody need to surrender the generational curses. Somebody need to surrender the brokenness. Somebody need to surrender poverty because you've been walking in lack for too long. Somebody need to surrender whatever the only is. Broken relationships, broken friendships, broken finances, rejection, hurt, pain. The only thing that you've been experiencing over the last two years. Over the last year in this pandemic, over the last six months, what is the only thing you've been experiencing that stands out to you? God said, take the only and give it to me. Take the only and give it to me. Take the only. Take the generational curse of what mama and daddy and them used to do. We was at, we had a phenomenal time last night at the uh, life group the, for uh, marriages, Covenant Keepers. Shout out to the Carters. Amen. 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 And it was something that Patrick said. He said, but I only knew. Wow. He said, I only knew how to do this. This, is, this was for our conversation, right? He said, but that's all I, I only knew how to do. How? Why? Because that's all mama did. That's all daddy did. That's all my uncles did. That's all my cousins did. He said, that was the only thing that I knew how to do. But what changed it was when he gave the only to God. Come on, somebody. And he was able to walk in multiplication, increase blessings and favor because he let go of the only. He let go of the only, and he saw that he could produce something more than the only. Mm -hmm. See, but he didn't know he could produce something more than the only until he gave it to God. Until he surrendered that thing to God. He surrendered mama. 
He surrendered daddy. He surrendered uncle. He surrendered cousins. He had to surrender only so that he can receive blessings. He can receive breakthrough. You got to give it to God. Verse, verse 18. What did Jesus tell them? They said, well, we only have. And his response, bring them here to me. <laughs> That's a, this is what Jesus said. They said, but we only. And he said, here's one sentence to them. Bring them here to me. I'm going to show you what to do with the only. I'm going to show you how to surrender that thing. I'm going to show you how to go to the next level with the only. I'm going to show you the good that's in the bad that you see. I'm going to take the only and make nothing into something. Amen. I'm going to take the only. He said, bring it here to me. Bring it here to me. The second thing, the second process is, one, you got to give it to God. Now, two, two, you got to sit down somewhere. <laughs> Sit down somewhere. Be patient and watch him work. See, sometimes we say, well, I'm going to give it to God. Then you come to the altar, you give it to God. Then you walk out the door, you take it back. It's like that behind the back pass. It's like, woo, got to get back to myself. Woo, bring it back. And now I'm walking out with it because I think I can do something with it. But no, God said, first you got to give it to me. Stop taking it back because when you take it back, you, you're going straight into the hands of the devil. With doubt, with fear, with insecurity, with the same thing that you tried to let go, you walking back out the door with it. He said, now sit down somewhere. <laughs> Be patient. It's a process with your only. You've been walking in your only for years. You've been doing your only for months. You've been doing, now you got to, now you only give me a day. See, it's, it's funny how we've been rolling with the only for so long. But then when we give it to God, we give him a day to get it right. We give him a week to get it. We give him a month to fix it. But when he don't fix it in that time period, we're back in those streets. We're back doing what we're doing. We're back in insecurity. We're back in fear. We're back in depression. Why? Because God didn't move in the time that we wanted him to move. I surrendered it for a month and nothing happened. So I sat down for a month waiting on Jesus. But Jesus didn't make a move. He didn't bust a move on the head of the enemy. So now because he didn't do it in there a lot of time, I was sitting down. But now I got to get back up and try to handle this thing. I got to try to handle it because I gave it to God and God didn't move it quick enough. God didn't manifest quick enough. Jesus said, sit down somewhere. He's like, you gave it to me. Stop trying to do it. Stop trying to make it happen in your own strength because you can't do that in your own strength. Where did I get that from? Sit down somewhere and watch him work. And verse 19, it says, after they, they, they gave it to him, he directed the people to what? Sit down. Sit down on the grass. <laughs> watch me work. Sit down on the grass. Watch me work. You surrendered what you have to me. You surrendered it. You gave your tithes. Okay, good job. Okay, you gave your little 10%. Praise ye the Lord. Now watch me work. Where's your faith to believe that multiplication can come? If it don't come tomorrow, the day after you give your tithe, will you still wait for me? Will you sit down in my favor, in my presence, in, my, in, in the abundance of who I am and wait for manifestation? Sit down so well. Give it to me. But watch me work it. Give me a chance to work it. You let the world, it's funny how we, we, we be in the world for a hundred years. We be in addiction for a hundred years. We be in lust and perversion for a hundred years. But then we come to Jesus and we give it to him one day. We say, I surrender my life. And then we think everything, like he's supposed to change everything in one day. God was like, sit down somewhere. You gave the world a hundred years. Give me two. Give me a year. Give me some time is what the Lord is saying. Amen. Give me some time to work it because things happen in seasons. Mm. Things happen in a godly order. Yeah. Things happen in the timing of God. Not your timing. Things happen in the timing of God. So sit down somewhere. Number three, the process. So you give it to God. Now you got to sit down and let him work. You got to give thanks for the little. Mm. Because the increase first starts with gratitude. Oh, my goodness. So so here's the thing. I gave it to God. I sat down somewhere. And then I began to prophetically.
simply praise him for the increase. I didn't have the increase. I didn't see the abundance after I gave it to him. I walked out the door still broke as a joke. I walked out the door still in my mind thinking like, have I changed? Has anything changed? Has increase come? But, but here's the thing. I can walk out that door and say, God, I thank you that it's already done. Yeah. I thank you for the little yeah. that I got because you can take a little and take it and make it into a lot. So you got to look at what you got and you got to thank God for the broken wife. Yeah. Thank God for the broken husband. Thank God for the $50 in your account. Thank God and say, God, I thank you that you're doing a work that I don't even know you're doing it. I thank you that you're doing something to my children and I don't even know you're doing it. I thank you for what you're doing. I don't see it, but I see it. I speak over my wife. I speak over my husband. I speak over my children. I look into the bank account. Now they clear overflow in the name of Jesus. I'm going to give you thanks before I even got it in my hand. Before he broke the five loaves and the, whatever the fish was, he gave thanks for it because he knew multiplication was coming. He knew multiplication was coming. He knew increase was coming. He knew favor was coming. He knew blessings was coming. But what did he do? He gave thanks before it came. That's a prophetic praise. That's what you call a prophetic praise. That's what you call my marriage going to a next level. My relationship going to another level. My grace going to another level. My favor going to another level. I'm going to praise you right now for it because I already see it, but I don't see it. It's another level. It's another level. See, y'all got to get this. This is radical faith. We talking about radical faith. It's another level. You got to declare another level over whatever the little. Well, I ain't got but a little. Well, we ain't got but a little. Well, we ain't got. Come on, somebody. Give it to God. Sit down somewhere. Give him prophetic praise. That is already done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man. My God. I get that. That's still in verse 19. It says, take in the five loaves and the two fish. The little. And looking up to heaven, what did he do? He gave thanks. Taking the five loaves and the, and, the, and, the, and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and he gave thanks. Taking my husband, taking my wife, taking my children, taking my bank account, taking my business, the little that I see in them. The little that I have, I'm going to hold them up unto God mm. and say, thank you. Thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you, God. And he broke the loaves. That leads me to process number four. God will break you. So he can make you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. God will break you so he can make you. Increase comes from broken pieces, baby. Increase comes from broken pieces. Increase comes from broken pieces. He had to break your marriage so he could be whole. Come on, somebody. He had to break your bank account so he could be full. He had to break you some kind of way so that you can be made whole through your brokenness. You had to be through. You had to go through. You had to experience. You had to be like daddy. You had to be like mom because it was in your brokenness that you were going to realize that it was taking you nowhere fast. Come on, somebody. So you had to be broken so that you could be made whole. You had to come to a little bit of nothing. You had to have a little bit of money in the bank account so that he could fill you up. Wow. Increase comes but from broken pieces, little by little, little by little, little by little, little by little. But here's the thing. We can't stand being broken. We can't stand being broken. We can't stand being broken. We can't stand being rejected. We can't stand our feelings hurt. We can't stand having a little money in the bank again. We can't stand it. We can't stand it. We can't stand it. It's like, God, what it happened? Why it happened? I mean, I mean, I feel like I'm being left over, picked on, all kinds of stuff. But God said you have to be broken. You had to be broken. So that you can be made whole. You have to see that the lifestyle that you live in wasn't making no sense. Wow. 
You had to see that you were hurting everybody with decisions. You had to see. You had to learn from the mistake. You had to lose the job. You had to lose the money. You had to. Somebody say had to. It had to happen. I had to get rejected. I had to get my feelings hurt. I had to. Because God said, I'm going to make you whole. But before I can make you whole, i got to first break you. Wow. Jesus didn't come into his fullness until he was broken on the cross. He was broken to death on the cross. Jesus couldn't come into his fullness. But he, it says, taking the five loaves and the two fish. Looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and he broke the loaves. Then he, oh, this is good. Then he gave. I'm going to break you. <laughs> Watch this, Trisha. I'm going to break you. And then I'm going to put you before the people. And I'm gonna tell, you're going to tell them how you was broken. Why? Because they need to feast on your food. Because that's food for somebody else. I'm going to break you. You're going to have six miscarriages. You're going to be broken. You're going to feel rejected, hurt, pain, like I forgot about you, like I wasn't there for you. And then I'm going to put you on a platform before people. And you're going to tell everybody how you was broken down. I'm going to break your money for your business. You're going to only have $125. And then you're going to wonder, where is God? What is going on? But then you're going to get on your face and you're going to worship. Come on, somebody. You're going to enter into another level of worship with God. And in that time of worship, I'm going to give you wisdom, knowledge, and revelation on how to go to the next level. And then from there, you're going to take heed to what I say. You're going to do what I say. And then you're going to go from $125 to, whoo, come on, somebody. But I'm going to break you financially so you can stand before people and say, look how he made me. I'm going to break you so I can make you. I'm going to break you so I can make you. I'm going to break you and then you're going to stand before the people and talk about how you was depressed for six to eight months. Because you're going to feed that soul. And you're going to help them to understand that they had to be broken. They had to be broken. And that's my fifth point. God will give you brokenness so you can be whole. Mm. So four, he has to break you so you, he can make you. But that breaking, that breaking causes you to be whole. Broken pieces, watch this, broken pieces give you clarity, give you direction, give you wisdom, give you knowledge, give you revelation. It gives you the power. Broken pieces give you power to keep it moving, Susan. Mm. See, you have to be broken because in the brokenness you have to find your strength for another day. It may not feel like it, but you get your strength for the journey. You got you you got to understand that wholeness comes from brokenness. And the last thing, your brokenness bears witness to others and helps them to be full. Mm. So I need you to get up and testify Amen. about what you did in your marriage. <laughs> I need you to testify about what you did in them streets. I need you to testify about how, what your business was like, what your money was like. I need you to testify how you got hurt when you was little. I need you to testify about the molestation, about the rape. I need you to testify. See, all of that is brokenness. All of that. You look at it, it's like, oh, no, I can't tell nobody about that. See, they got to look at me like I got it going on. They can't look at me like I was broke, busted, and disgusted. They can't look at me like I ain't have uh, two pennies to rub together. They can't look at me like that because I have to keep a perception of who I am. <clears throat> See, see, you got to understand that there are people that you got to feed. 
There are people that are in need of your testimony. You was in the streets. You was wilding out. You was smoking any and everything you could get your hands on. You was drinking any and everything you could get your cup full on. You were sexing any and everything you could get your hands on. You got to understand that, yeah, that was brokenness. God is saying, yeah, but your brokenness is about to fill somebody up because they need to hear it. It ain't about perception with God. God don't care about your reputation, how people see you. He cares about people getting healed, delivered, and set free. And a lot of times it's in your mouth that somebody else is waiting on to get that freedom. Amen. Look at this scripture. Then he gave them to the disciples. And what did the disciples do? Gave to the people. Then he gave the brokenness to the disciples. And the disciples, what did they do? They gave. No, I need y'all to hear this. Then he gave the brokenness to who? Are you children of God? Then you are the one that he's given brokenness to. And you know, I don't understand God. God said, I do. It's not for you to understand. It's for you to get through. Mm. It's not for you to understand. It's for you to get through. I'm going to say that over here. It's not for you to understand, but it's for you to get through. Because I'm giving brokenness to who? You. You. You are the disciples. You are the children of God. I'm giving the broken pieces to the disciples. And I need the disciples to give it to the I'm going to say that again. I need the disciples to give it to the people. Y'all got to say it like you mean it. He needs the disciples to give it to the people. What's the next scripture? And the number of those who ate. <laughs> the number of those that are going to feast off your brokenness. Wow. The magnitude of the words that are going to come out of your mouth. The deliverance that's going to come out of your mouth. The healing that's going to come out of your mouth. The number of people that are waiting on you. Wow. Say it's in the number. It's in the number. But it's also in my mouth. Mm. Oh my God. Say it again. It's in the numbers. It's in the number. But it's also, it's also in my mouth. God is waiting on you. Yeah, you were sick. Yeah, you were down and out. But where's the testimony? Mm. What, what can somebody make out of your sickness? What can somebody make out of your frustration? What can somebody make out of your depression? Yeah, you were broken. Okay, but look at you now. You ain't in the grave. Because you're not in the grave, that means God is giving you an opportunity to get it right. Mm. You ain't the only one that's been broken. You ain't the only one that's been struggling. You ain't the only one in need. And why are you embarrassed to share your story? Jesus. There are 5,000 men. But look at this. It don't even include the women and the children. This says that it was about 5,000 men. They had a lot of children back in the day. So that was 5,000 plus mm. that feasted off of their brokenness. Yeah. Stand to your feet.